Hi guys, Doodle, you wanna get up here and say hi? Come on, come on, get up here, look. Say hi to the kids. Okay, now you can lay down. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you had a good week last week and we're gonna have a good week this week. So we are going to hear the story about Noah and then we'll talk a little bit about his characteristics. Noah, what do we know about him? He was a old man and he built a boat. Anyway, let's get into it. And we can read it in our Bibles from Genesis 6. And I believe it goes through 9. And I'm going to kind of paraphrase, which means make up my own story. <laughs> sort of. So I want you guys to go back and read it in the Bible so that you really know what I'm talking about, okay? Now back in those days when Noah was asked to build the ark, people were really mean and wicked and naughty. And God had just had enough. And he said, I've had it. I'm going to wipe these people out. And he went to Noah, who was really, really um, liked to please God. He wanted to please God. And a very strong spiritual leader in his family. So God told Noah, and Noah was old then. He was probably... 500-ish, maybe 600 when he started building. But God told Noah, build an ark. Build me a big, big, big boat. And it's gotta be really big because you're gonna put animals in it and you're gonna put your family in it. Well, people made fun of Noah because he did believe in God and he did serve God. And can you imagine him? Noah's building this ark. He's building this big, big boat. And there's no water anywhere around. Noah, what are you doing? <laughs> You're building a boat. <laughs> that is so funny. Noah, there's no water. What do you need a boat for? And Noah, what do you need it so big for? You're going to do what? You're going to put animals in that? Are you crazy? Do you know how smelly that's going to be? Oh boy. No, I, you're just not there. You're just... <laughs> so funny. <laughs> you're going to build a boat and there's no water. <laughs> and you really believe God's going to flood this earth? He's going to put water here and, and wipe us all out? You are just totally out of it. And the Bible does say that. So Noah was building his big, big boat and God told him how big to build it. And he told Noah, I want you to take two of every kind of animal, the birds, elephants, monkeys, leopards, rabbits, everything, two of everything, ducks, snakes, all kinds of snakes, all kinds of different snakes two of everything, and I mean two of every kind, a male and a female. So, Genesis 7, verse 11 says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, can you imagine being in a big, big boat with all those animals? Noah had to build, and when he was old, if it, he was 600 when the rains finally came, it took him a while to build that. It took him over 100 years to build that big boat. And he had to get all the food for all the animals in it. And that would be a lot of food. And he probably had to get food for his family in there. Now, Noah had three sons, and they were married, so that meant three daughter-in-laws and his wife and him. So that was eight people on the boat to take care of all those animals. That would be a chore. You would spend all day and all night taking care of animals, cleaning them up and feeding them and watering them. 
I don't know how many of you guys live on a farm, but farms are a lot of work. Branches are a lot of work. And sometimes, even for us city slickers, taking care of a dog's a lot of work, right? You gotta make sure they have food and water. How many of you guys do that for your moms and dads? For your family pets, they have to be fed, right? Well, can you imagine all these animals on that big boat? They all had to be fed. Anyways, getting back <clears throat> to the story, <laughs> they put them on, everybody got on, and Noah's checking off the list, making sure, oh, yep, got the giraffes, got the monkeys, got the bears. Now bears, you better behave. No polar bears can be fighting with the grizzly bears or the black bears or the brown bears. Got it? You cannot fight. And no, oh, his snakes can sneak out of their cages. You need to stay where you're at and no biting. That's what I would say to those animals if I had to take care of them. I'm not sure. I'd probably take very good care of a snake. <laughs> but if God told me to, I would. <laughs> and the birds. Now birds, you can't fly all over and fly, 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 unless I tell you you can. Because you'll be all over the place and we can't have that. you got to stay in your own area, okay? Now, can you imagine Noah telling him that? And telling his sons to make sure that they have fresh hay and fresh straw, fresh straw to lay on, make sure everybody's taken care of, and then you have to take care of yourselves and you're so tired at night. Oh. And the floods were, I'm sure the waters were not real smooth sailing, you know what I mean? Floods usually aren't very calm. So, probably worse than our boat ride that we had a few weeks ago. So anyway, after 40 days and 40 nights, the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. But the earth was flooded for 150 days. Wow, that's a long time to be on a big boat. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock that were with him on the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. That meant they went down. And the water receded steadily from the earth. And at the end of the 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountain of Ararat. Ararat. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, guys. <laughs> The waters continued to recede until the 10th month, and on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. And after 40 days, Noah opened the window and he made, that he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find no place to land to put his feet because there was water over all the surface still of the earth. So he returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and he took the dove and he brought it back to himself in the ark. And he waited seven more days. And again he sent out the dove. And when the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. So he waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time the dove didn't come back. So he knew the dove found some place to make a nest and live. So by the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, 601, that's how old Noah was. The water dried up from the earth. Noah removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry and on the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. God told Noah, come on out of the ark, you and your wife and your son and wives, and bring out every kind of living creature that's with you. So that's what Noah did. And then God made a covenant with Noah. Now, a covenant is a promise. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. 
The fear and the dread of you will fall upon all beasts in the, of the earth and all the birds of the air and every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish in the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not meet, eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting for every animal. And from each man too, I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. And then we go on to read about the rainbow that God put in the sky. And what was that rainbow all about? Noah made an altar and worshiped God, thanking him for saving their lives and for the return of dry land. God was happy with Noah and put a beautiful rainbow in the sky to show that he was happy and pleased with Noah. This is a sign of my love, I promise. I will never flood the earth again. Now today we have floods, but it's not the whole earth, right? So God's not breaking his promise. And what do you think about those guys laughing at Noah when he started building that ark? Those evil people. Let's not be like them, but let's be like Noah. Remember I said, Noah lived an uncompromised life. That meant he was unwilling to change the way he lived his life because he loved God and he served God. Noah was a spiritual leader for his family. Pleasing God was more important to Noah than anything, and especially more important than pleasing other people. Ooh, wait a minute. How many times do we try to please other people before we please God? Do we do that? Oh, let's try not to, okay? Let's remember Noah when that, when a opportunity comes that somebody says, oh, come on, you can do this. Oh, let's just go there instead of helping somebody else. Now, what would you think God would want you to do? Would he want you to help someone else? Or would he want you to go play with your friends? He wants you to have fun and enjoy life, but he wants you to also Please him by serving other people like he told us to. Serving and loving our neighbors. He wants us to be a good example, as Noah was, of being in the world. He wants us to not be of the world, but be in the world. That means we live in the world, we serve in the world, but we don't take part in being of the world, of being in the sinful nature of the world. Just as Noah ignored his naughty neighbors that laughed at him and made fun of him and were very sinful people, he served God. And that's what we need to do. Noah trusted and obeyed, even though he didn't understand what was happening at first. Now, can you imagine somebody walking up to you and saying, hey, you go build me a big boat and there's no water around. You can go build that boat. If God told you to, you would because you trust him and you're going to obey him. You know, God always has our lives in his hands. He has the best for us in his hands. And sometimes we don't think about it or sometimes we doubt. Well, God, what do you mean? You want me to go over there instead of stay here? I'm doing fine here. Or why, God? Why did Noah have to build that big boat? Because God loved Noah. He wanted to save Noah, but he was going to destroy the sinful nature of all the other people. He was done with them. So God always has our best in his heart and he wants the best for us. Noah preached and he was an amateur engineer, don't you think? Noah didn't had never built a boat before, but he did it and it didn't sink. 
So how many people were on the ark with Noah? Remember I said there were his three sons and his three daughter-in-laws and his wife and himself. So there were eight people. And did you know Noah lived until he was in his 900s? That's what scripture tells us. That's a long time. So let's try and take on Noah's characteristics this week as we're living out our lives, okay? Let's live for God. Don't let your friends persuade you to not live for God. Let's please God more than we please other people. Be a good example to the world. Let's live in the world, but not be of the world. And we can find scriptures there for that. That's in Romans. My scripture that I found was in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's trust and obey him that he knows better than we do what's best for us. If we can, we can go preach or teach about God and his love. We don't have to try and be an engineer if we don't want to. But you might try and build an ark or a big boat with your Legos or your blocks. So next week, I think we're still going to be doing um, our watch party. And so I will see you then. Bye.